So, so back in the 90s, we developed uh, a questionnaire that health visitors or GPs could use, family physicians, called the CHAT, which stands for the Checklist for Autism in Toddlers. It's just a brief questionnaire, and it, it looks to see whether children are reaching their milestones, and if they're not, whether that could help improve the, uh, the ability of the physician or the health visitor to identify that this could be a child who needs a full autism assessment because they might need an early diagnosis with a view to help. And, you know, successively over the decades, really, it's, you know, research is a, a long game. We're improving that method. Uh, we've now got an instrument called the QChat, which is the quick or quantitative checklist for autism in toddlers, just because we know that autism is a spectrum and you need an instrument that's sensitive to the variation that you might expect on the spectrum. In terms of what parents could be looking for, I think that's what you're saying. You know, it's really... Um, well, I could refer to our, our checklist at 18 months old, because at least we're, we're then talking about an evidence-based set of signs and symptoms. So one of the things we look for at 18 months old is, is the child using joint attention? So joint attention is where the child is pointing at things, looking back at the parent, but pointing things out. So even before they've got words or language, they might be using gesture, and particularly the index finger, to point at something, look back to see if they're sharing something with another person. That would be one example of joint attention. And it's called joint attention because the action brings both people into a shared focus as if the child is saying, look at that, and seeing if you are also enjoying the same topic. So it's like, you know, it's like early, um, an early communication, pre-verbal communication, to establish a shared topic between two people. Another example of joint attention is if the parent suddenly looks and turns to see something, you look to see if the child also turns spontaneously to look at the same thing. And we know that a typical child by 18 months is both producing the pointing gesture or following when the parent points or spontaneously following, looking at the parent's face, looking at their eyes and following where they're looking. It's all part of establishing joint attention. And we also know from lots of evidence, this is really 20 to 30 years of research, that children with autism are delayed in joint attention. They, they may not point, they may only point, if they do it at all, to, to meet their own needs. You know, that they want food, they just point at the food and they get it. But they're not doing it almost intrinsically to just share pleasure in something because they've seen something interesting. They may not be following up, up where a parent is looking. So they're not, they're not benefiting from learning from another person's social experience. That would be, if you like, one of the flags to say this child might need a diagnosis. Just one example. And do parents have access to those questions, to that questionnaire? Is, is it available publicly on a website or something? So um, we make all of our research instruments freely available on our website. Um, I, I mentioned that's called the QChat. It's, it's still the case that parents need to be advocates for their children. Yeah. Yeah. They need to sort of go to their GP and say, I've filled out this checklist. And this is why I'm concerned about my child. Please can I have a referral to a specialist clinic? So, you know, they shouldn't have to fight yeah. to, to get help for their children, but, you know, they may still need to.